Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com. Keeping it free. Blogspot.com. Today is Tuesday, July the 17th, 2018. Let's talk cryptocurrency, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I've made numerous cryptocurrency videos here online. Let me just point out that in the last few months, cryptocurrency, simply put, has performed awfully in the marketplace. Right? It's in the midst of a severe bear market. There's been recently some signs of life, but let's not kid ourselves. Bitcoin has dropped in the last few months from $20,000 a Bitcoin to under $7,000 a Bitcoin. Altcoins like Dash, my personal favorite, were well over $1,000 a coin late last year. They're now under $300 a coin. So, some of the people around me know that I believe strongly in cryptocurrency. So as I walk around, as I encounter them, you know, the way life is, you see people once every few weeks. As I encounter them, recently they've been treating me like I have a fatal illness. Right? Like I have just a few days to live. Like I've suffered an injury that quite frankly can't be addressed. They speak in hushed tones. It's as if I've lost a family member. Now let me just make a few points here. I believe these are points that really need to be made, especially in this environment. Right, please understand that the volatility in cryptocurrency is not new. Right? People who go back to the Mount Gox debacle, remember when crypt when Bitcoin dropped and stayed down for a while. Right? People who've been in cryptocurrency understand and can anticipate the turbulence. Let me also say too, the market has been out of sync with the value of the technology before. Right, right now in crypto, there's a big movement among many cryptocurrencies to develop what's called master nodes. A collection of the individual cryptocurrency a node that helps the network while generating passive income for the node holder. But understand when the master node concept was inaugurated by Evan Duffield, a name you need to remember, of Dash, when he invented the master node, I can tell you as someone who has held Dash from a time before it was even called Dash, I could tell you that the market was flat. That the world at that time had no idea about the value of a master node. The price didn't move. Right now, of course, master nodes are some of the hottest things running in the space. So let me just make a statement here and it's one I hope everyone watching this video fully understands. I'm not a crypto trader. I'm a crypto investor. I'm in it for the long haul. I believe in the technology. So if I have crypto on Sunday, based on my view on the need for crypto, the problems that the technology solves, the utility of the technology, 
If I'm a crypto holder on Sunday and it starts raining on Tuesday, folks, I'm still going to be holding my cryptocurrency on Wednesday. Right? If the technology continues to be useful to society, if the technology continues to deliver cost-effective solutions to real-world problems. Let me also add, too, that if you have been in crypto for more than the last year, not just the last few months, but more than the last year, then you're likely up big, right? Not just up, but up big. Understand, I know Bitcoin dropped from $20,000 a coin to under seven. But just recognize that in January of 2017, and you can look up the chart, Bitcoin was around $1,000. It's now over $6,000. You've made several times your money. Now, sure, some people can say, hey, well, you haven't made that money in the last few months. True. But again, I'm in it for the long haul. Right? Crypto, to me, Bitcoin, for example, solves real-world problems. Is actually needed to plug a hole in our finance system. Right? So if you're going to give me a rate of return over the last 18 months of more than five times my investment, great, right? Many of the naysayers are just focusing on the recent downturn. What I want people to do is to have a longer time horizon, look a little further back into the past. Again, let me repeat myself. If you've been in crypto for the last year, chances are you're probably up big. Now, I understand many people are shaken by the events of the last few months. I was just out in my neighborhood and a good friend stopped me. And again, he was talking in a hushed tone. You would have thought that, you know, my daughter died or something like that. So just understand, there's never been a better time, in my opinion, for crypto. Let's talk about the regulatory thawing that's been happening, that's been going toward crypto's way, right? Un understand that some governments in the last few months. This is while cryptocurrency has been cratering in the market, in terms of market value, right? And as I make this video, the total market cap of all cryptos, according to coinmarketcap.com, is less than $300 million. Understand it's less than half of the market cap of Amazon, for example. Right? Crypto is still in the early innings, folks. But just understand that before, there was a lot of uncertainty about how governments would react to crypto because crypto, quite frankly, is a disruptor. It really does disrupt the need for central banks. Right? It really takes you outside of the whims of politicians and Federal Reserve members. Right? Certain cryptos think Bitcoin, think Bitcoin Cash, think Dash, have a limited supply. Right? There is no money printing as there is with fiat currency. But understand, be that as it may, crypto has actually had some good things happen to it on the regulatory front. Switzerland, for example, in the last few months, now has a legal framework for initial coin offerings. 
Here in the United States, if you use the phrase ICO, you almost have to put your hand over your mouth, right? The powers that be here don't like the idea of ICOs, as if ICOs aren't a great way to raise capital. As if there aren't people out there who understand the risk and who aren't willing to take the risk by participating in an ICO. Well, just to understand, in some countries, ICOs are actually embraced. In Switzerland, they have a legal framework for ICOs. Understand, in Japan, cryptocurrency is legal tender. Bitcoin is legal tender in Japan. Right? You can literally pay your bills using Bitcoin. In Malta, they actually competed internationally to get big-time exchange, cryptocurrency exchange, Binance, to move to Malta. Right? Malta's interested in economic development. They understand that long-term cryptocurrency is a growth market, right? So they not only are open to crypto, folks, they're competing. They're providing incentives for cryptocurrency-based firms to move there, right? Understand, too, Binance is now in the process of investing in a decentralized bank. Right? They now have a friendly jurisdiction in which they operate, and they can now take certain steps that were not possible a few months ago. Let's talk about the United States. In the United States, the SEC chairman, Jay Clayton, has given his opinion that Bitcoin is not a security. What that means is that Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies similar to Bitcoin aren't going to be subject to the level of legal scrutiny and the requirements that come with being a security. Understand, too, there's a move here in the United States to have a Bitcoin-backed ETF. Right, folks? You come up with a Bitcoin ETF and you're that much closer that much closer to a wave of institutional money coming into the space. Let me also point out too that Coinbase is on the verge of adding new cryptocurrencies to its offerings. Right? Think about that. Coinbase is growing. They're growing to the point now that they have a bit license to operate legally in New York State. Understand, New York State is dominated by banks and financial institutions on Wall Street, right? New York State's the home of Wall Street. Just know that cryptocurrency, Coinbase, and others, including Square, can now legally operate in the state. Let me say this too. The Netherlands has the highest concentration of Bitcoin ATMs in the world. What about Venezuela? Think about it. They've had hard economic times, right? The financial world down there really has been shaken. Banks really have had problems there. Supermarkets have had a very hard time keeping items on the shelves. Uh, the population as a whole has lost weight during this economic downturn. Google it. So, of course, in that economic abyss, the cryptocurrency Dash now has a greater market share than it does in the United States. Right, folks? Dash has a website for merchants who accept Dash to register where they can point out to the public that, hey, we accept Dash. And you have several such businesses from Venezuela now on that site. Right again, Dash is used more broadly in Venezuela right now than it is in the United States. Right? 
Let me also uh, point out, too, that technologically, simply put, and I'm biased, as I said, I'm a cryptocurrency investor in it for the long haul, right? In my opinion, technologically, fiat simply cannot compete. Let's talk about EOS, a new network. You know, EOS is made for transaction fee free transactions. Think about it. Those fees that you're paying on your credit card purchases, you wouldn't have to pay them if you would use the EOS network. Understand, too, and again, this is all recent, folks. This is in the last few months, right? Just understand that EOS is network capacity is much greater than that of Ethereum. Right? Now, Ethereum's trying to counter by offering off-chain solutions. So you have the emergence of cryptocurrencies in that space, taking advantage of the off-chain decentralized transaction possibilities. And one of them is 0x. This is one of the cryptocurrencies that Coinbase right now is thinking about adding to their offerings. Right? So what you have now is the emergence of very powerful, very fast, much higher capacity networks in EOS. Let me name another one. Zilliqua. Right? Fast, powerful. Zilliqua uses a technology called sharding that actually increases network capacity. And to respond, Ethereum, right, an older crypto, is now actively looking at off chain solutions, right, as is Bitcoin in response to the higher capacity on-chain experience of Bitcoin Cash, right? So the space is evolving rapidly. Let me also point out, too, that Ethereum, an excellent crypto, but again, you have technological change in the space. Many people believe that Ethereum right now is a bit bloated. Understand, Ethereum Classic the cryptocurrency which Coinbase is also thinking about offering isn't as bloated as Ethereum and has the same technological capability right now. So, rather than me tell you what to do, let me tell you what I like, what I'm doing, what I think is valuable right now in the crypto space some of the ideas I like, right? All of them would take too long, quite frankly, and we're 18 minutes into this video. In my opinion, in the cryptocurrency world, and I'm biased, no one is doing more, and I mean no one is doing more than Dash. I know this is not an opinion you hear that often, I know we all get excited by the new network, the new ICO, etc. But just consider, Dash, simply put, has the best governance in the cryptocurrency space. Right? To get an idea of Dash's level of governance, I want you to go to DashVoteTracker.com. Again, DashVoteTracker.com. You're going to see a list of proposals that the Dash community is voting on right now. In other words, folks, yes, the Dash community has a vote. If you have a masternode, you can vote on the future of the cryptocurrency. Right? Understand the governance is so groundbreaking that many other very good, very true cryptocurrencies, Zencash comes to mind, 
are trying to imitate it. Right? I know Zcash is trying to get people involved as well. Dash is already there. Let me also point out too that Dash has cutting edge, spectacular technology. Not just out now, but in the pipeline. They just updated their wallet. Right? In a few weeks' time, they're going to drop evolution. It's going to change the cryptocurrency space. Right? Simply put, evolution is going to enable you to easily send people money based on their email address or a short address they give you. Not a series of letters that don't make sense but someone will be able to say to you things like hey just send it to big fish and you'll be able to do that right in other words evolution is gonna bring PayPal usability to the cryptocurrency space right think about it folks dash just updated their wallet right they're that much closer to evolution. It's going to happen this year. We're already in the middle of July. Right? If you think kids love cryptocurrency now, could you imagine being on a high school or a college campus when evolution drops? There's going to be a gold rush to grab names. Right? People are going to start being known by their Dash address. Let me also say, too, that with Dash, you have widespread usage, and I mean widespread usage, that is not fully reflected in its price. What I want you to do right now is to go to CoinFairValue.com. Again, CoinFair, F-A-I-R, Value.com. And you're going to see an analyst's take on certain factors for each cryptocurrency, right? The amount of the cryptocurrency, the velocity of the cryptocurrency, the price times transactions. So on this site, they attempt to give you the fair market value of each cryptocurrency versus its current market value. You might be surprised to learn that according to this site, the fair market value of Dash is more than $500 a coin. Right now, the market value of Dash is less than half of that, right? I don't think the market right now understands how broadly used Dash is. I hope you give it a look, coinfairvalue.com, right? Let me also say, too, that Dash's governance, as shown by dashvotetracker.com, allows for targeted marketing and proposals internationally in areas where, simply put, the banking sector has failed. So you, right now, have Dash gaining traction in Venezuela and in parts of Africa. Understand, if you actually bring a stable currency with a set monetary supply to areas that have had runaway inflation and Weimar Republic type pass, if you give entrepreneurs the opportunity to be able to rely on the value of the currency they're receiving in exchange for their goods and services, you're going to have an economic renaissance, folks. Venezuela is coming back from the economic abyss. Dash is helping them do so. You'll notice at dashvotetracker.com 
they actually list some of the international projects that Dash is involved in. Understand, this is an insider website that's really intended to allow Masternode owners to take a quick glance at what's passing and what's not. I believe outsiders need to be aware of this because when they go to the site and they look at it, they're gonna say, gee, Dash has proposals involving Latin America Dash has proposals involving Ghana and places in Africa. Why doesn't my cryptocurrency? Right? Let me also say, too, let's talk about Dash masternodes. Just food for thought. You'll notice on the DashVoteTracker.com site, they have a category, a vote taking place right now. It's passing on what's called a Dash masternode tool. Understand Dash is so advanced, folks, that you could actually host your master node on your treasure or ledger wallet. <laughs> right? Think about it. This is not all over the net. I'm just telling you there was a proposal. Someone has come up with the technology. They then approached Dash. They said, hey, would Dash like to contribute to my research? And you know how Dash does it. They put it to a vote. The master node owner said, hell yeah. Right? Just understand, Dash not only has a master node structure, it's advanced to the point where you can operate on treasure and ledger. Right? Other ideas I like... I've mentioned many of them. EOS, you show me a fast, powerful, high-capacity network that can do transactions uh, cheaply, often at no cost, quickly. I'm going to go for that. I like EOS. I like NEO. Same type thing. I like... 0x, which increases decentralization, I believe ultimately we're going to move away from centralized exchanges toward decentralized exchanges, right? Coins like 0x, and I encourage you to look up this coin, are going to help in that transition. Cardano, just to understand, many more programming languages then Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. Over time, that's going to lead to more innovation. Let me take a moment here, too, to talk about Zencash, right? Once in a while, you're going to come across a cryptocurrency that doesn't have a big market cap, but that has vastly superior technology. Zencash is one of them. Excellent community. They're moving toward a Dash model where people actually get to participate. Zencash protects your privacy. Understand it's more than a cryptocurrency. They actually plan to have a private messaging system as well as the ability to make private videos, right? Think of a private YouTube channel. Also, Zencash right now has secure nodes. Right? If you have 42 Zencash, you can contact some outfit like Chainsaw.Ninja and set up a secured node. Right? You can even host it, by the way, on a Ledger wallet. Right? What that does is it gives you passive income. By the way, that passive income is going to increase in a few weeks. Well, now they have something called a super node. Right? Rather than 42 Zen Cash and a secure node, if you have 500 Zen Cash, you can have a super node and get even more money. Right? I encourage people to take a look at it. I believe the pension system, at least in the United States, is broken. If you're looking for passive income, you want to think about things like master nodes, secure nodes, and master nodes. Let's talk about another coin with a great community, great technology, privacy-centric, and masternodes. I like PIVX, P-I-V-X. It's an offshoot of Dash, 
right? Just to understand with PIVX, you have a proof of stake coin that is confidential, cutting edge technology. Because I also love privacy, I like Monero, I like Zcash, which is being considered by Coinbase right now for addition. I also prefer personally muscular coins, coins with low transaction fees with on-chain solutions, right? As much as I appreciate 0x, right? I like on-chain solutions where someone can look on the chain, there's no lightning network off the chain and things like that. So I prefer Bitcoin Cash to Bitcoin. I own both, right? Bitcoin has a network that exceeds everyone else's, right? It has the longer history. You can't easily do a 51% attack on Bitcoin. But I'll be the first to say, Bitcoin Cash, at least in my own personal usage of both, is faster. And I prefer the idea of on-chain solutions. I like the speed in which Bitcoin Cash can go from discussing a change in block size to actually implementing the change in block size. So to sum up, now that I'm past 30 minutes, Right? In my opinion, the future remains bright for cryptocurrencies. The technological innovations in the last few months, while crypto has lost market value, have been astonishing and augur a great future in my opinion. Right? Let me also say too, that given all the economic stress, given the fact that even Deutsche Bank is having financial problems to the point where many are wondering if it's going to survive. I believe in that kind of environment, cryptocurrency is going to thrive. I believe there's a reason why New York State has relaxed somewhat their bit license laws. I believe there's a reason why Malta is competing to get cryptocurrency businesses. Why? Japan has accepted Bitcoin as legal tender. Right? From time to time, there will be bad news. China, India, they'll be worried about capital flight because they'll understand that if you have cryptocurrency, then you can get your money out of the country more easily, more, dare I say, conveniently. Right? So I remain a bull on crypto. I'm not selling my position. I'm adding to my position. I'm now spread out into new emerging coins as well as in the coins that I've relied upon in the past. As I've said, if you've been in cryptocurrency for the last year, you're likely up big. I know that's not the way the press is reporting it. I understand there are people out there like Nuriel Rabini and Jim Chanos who aren't fans of cryptocurrency. Let me just say, right? You have people who have been very successful in the fiat currency world, like Robert Kiyosaki, who clearly see the value in cryptocurrency and who have pointed out that there are times, simply put, where as he calls it, some of these old guys, Warren Buffett, who's not a fan, uh, have been wrong, right? My point to you is, given that the networks are becoming stronger, cheaper, faster, given that we're in an age where we're improving on Ethereum with Zilliqua and EOS, Given that the price point already is cheaper, the transaction costs, than using credit cards. Given that the technology is there to have cryptocurrency be at least as convenient to use as PayPal. Let me just say that in my eyes, it's only a matter of time 
before it becomes apparent that cryptocurrency is superior to fiat currency. Right? I remain a bull. I admit I've been battered the last four months. I admit when I see some friends, it's like a member in the family has died. That's the price I'm willing to pay to be in a space that I feel is going to be much more valuable long term. These are still the early innings. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.